How can you create a better thinking environment? And how can you separate note taking from note making? Justin Horton will share his approach to answer both questions. Justin lives near Minneapolis, Minnesota and works as a business strategy consultant helping companies grow and evolve. This work happens at the intersection of creative thinking and effective execution, and it requires processing and synthesizing a steady stream of information and ideas. In the following showcase, we will see how Justin has structured his Obsidian Vault using the Linking Your Thinking frameworks to make a powerful integrated thinking environment, one that helps him manage the day-to-day -day noise while making space for higher level thinking. Let's tour Justin's setup now. Uh, mine's a little bit more of just kind of the raw, um throwing things open here with the garage door and getting everybody a chance to see this. Um, and so really, I, you know, I think that everybody has said when we've talked about um, just kind of across the, uh, the, our, with our crew conversations around doing showcases, everybody's a little bit nervous about doing these because it feels like these are, there's always the disclaimers about it's so rough and I'm not sure if I want to show this. And I think what I really have come to is it's not just that it's rough, but really acknowledging that it's more of a starting point. And this is really something that I'm working towards um, and so here's kind of where I'm at right now. And so I'm going to start off, you're going to hear some definitely some same themes um, as Tanuj hit on. I think the big one for me, um, and I guess one more thing to note for like as far as how I'm trying to frame this is just this, I'll give you a sense of how I've structured this and um, kind of how the general workflow has been helpful to me. And the basic idea that I'm building around is really that, that integrated thinking environment. Cause I feel like I've taken notes and taken notes and taken notes. And often it just ends up to be in this absolutely cluttered, useless way for me to be able to process things. And I find the whole thing to be, uh, it kind of gets in my way more than it helps. And that's where I've gotten to be. Um, this class, this workshop has really been helpful for me in being able to think about that a little bit. And so I've been trying to think about how my brain works. And one of the things that I've noticed the most is that I really need to be able to make some space to think. Um, and so when we talk about that, one of the things that stood out to me is remembering from a presentation that David Allen did from getting things done. I heard him talk about something once it was, he had talked about why GTD is so focused on the runway and looking at this lower level topics. It's all about clearing the runway so that you can actually get up to the higher levels of thinking. And I'm finding that that's really true for me and being able to process and do anything close to deeper thinking. I'm so caught up in the busy work and the busy notes that it, it's just really cluttered. And so I've been trying to apply the light frameworks and really think about that, that notion of lightweight earned structures and fluid frameworks and trying to figure out what that means for me and my system. And so with a little bit of on the inspiration side of things, I think obviously this is definitely, there's a little sci-fi in, inspired. So you get that, you get the, the obvious reference is Tony Stark and his the Iron Man workshop and being able to go across and look at that kind of an interface and how cool is that and have your system to talk with and work with. Um, but on the, the slightly nerdier answer and the probably the more real one is this book um, called Accelerando by Charles Strauss. And as I boosted this up in font size, that gets to be huge. So um, this is a book I read, I don't know, probably... Oh, I don't even know now, probably 10 years ago, something like that. And one of the concepts that he talks about in this book is this idea of exocortex. Um, and it's talking about the way that they framed it is this, it's this artificial intelligence outside part of your brain where you can interact with it and using technology. And I think that the, um, the extended mind book that's gotten popular recently hits on some of these things in a little bit more of a practical way, but this kind of thinking got me thinking about, well, what could that look like for me? And so I've built that out. You'll see my, the title of my, my uh, vault here is the exocortex. I'm kind of just riffing on that idea. And so the biggest thing that I will say that I've taken away from this whole discussion about how do we structure our spaces like this is to try to separate note-taking from note-making. And for me, that's been super, super important because when I tried to keep those things together, I was just constantly getting in my own way and not really able to get, get beyond that. So I've got what I've been thinking about my note-taking space where that's really a productivity system. And I feel like it's kind of important to also acknowledge that there's been a kind of a push recently to talk about how Obsidian could do absolutely everything and you can cobble together all sorts of DIY task managers and everything. And so far, and I guess it's always subject to change, but so far I'm trying not to do that too much um, and really to keep it a little bit, uh, keep focus tools for those things. Um, but that's one side. So there's the note-taking productivity side, and then there's the note-making side of things where it's really about thinking and trying to play around with ideas and then acknowledging that there's a bit of kind of utility support structures that need to go alongside that. 
And so what I'm going to do here with my time this morning is kind of walk you through what I've done for kind of the equivalent of my blueprint. And so I'm going to switch over uh, to a different window here. And I will say I'm still getting good or better at trying to navigate this. Uh, but Excaladra has got to be about my favorite plugin over the last bit. This is just the coolest thing to be able to play around and to do this within uh, do this within Obsidian is just, I don't know, I, I, I've lost a lot of time doing this, if I'm honest. So the way that I would structure this is just to say that there's ma eight main components that kind of cover this mix of note making, note taking, and utility spaces. And so I'm going to walk you through that and just give you a sense of how am I utilizing those things. So. I'll go through and just kind of break this down a bit about what that actually looks like. So the first, and I get the main kind of like the hub of this whole system is really what I'm calling the idea lab. And that's surrounded by the MOC side of things where it's collecting that and trying to get these maps together to process it. But this is kind of the heart where I've tried to keep this the tidiest and really just focusing on playing around with concepts and ideas and really dedicating that area to thinking and not letting all of the other busy work crowded out. Um, and so with that, we talk about one of the main ones that I end up using is this, the first note taking space. That's what I've called the logbook. And this is like the time stamped kinds of things. This is where I take all of my stuff. And this is where I do, I actually do a lot of note taking for my day job and just trying to keep track of the things. Um, I've got this broken apart and this is just time stamped. I've got a couple folders in there to manage it by year, just so it's not, not you know, really in, insurmountably confusing. But that's where I've got all of those things put in. I'm playing around with the idea of journaling within this, but keeping that as one dedicated space. And then, um, if I move down to this other corner, the other big note taking space is where I've got things like external sources. So if I'm taking notes on books or videos or any of that kind of stuff, I've got a place to land that. I've got a people spot. Um, and then the resource library is things like uh, anytime you end up with support files, like images or um, now Excalibur files are actually a good example. That's where those are landing. So keeping all of that stuff somewhat segmented and keeping it from getting too cluttered has been really helpful. Um, and then this other spot where I start talking about utility spaces, I've got a workspaces area that's set up as really kind of a hybrid between note taking and note making and being able to shovel all that stuff in there and not worry about, I don't have to get it right. It's just a folder to shove things and then figure it out from there. And then I can clean it up or keep it in that space as we go after that. And then I well, click the right button. And then this last one, my other utility space is really a combination one of a toolbox and an inbox. So we've got dashboards and I'm playing out the idea of data scopes is kind of new to me, but I've been playing around with data view a bit and trying to find ways that that might be helpful. So definitely early on with playing with that, but finding it helpful, you know, particularly for looking at things like notes that I've changed in the last week or created in the last week, it gives me a chance to be able to navigate this as my overall library starts to get bigger. Uh, and then the last other part of this is the inbox. And so that's where I really get a chance to, um, I'm trying to just very quickly be able to create kind of that frictionless capture, throw things there, process it later and see where it goes from that. And then the very last piece of that is the home note. And that's really just looking at as the common access point for everything and how that all sits together. And so if you go back now, you can kind of see all of that together is this whole big nested system has been really helpful to me to be able to just get this stuff it's simple. It's not too heavy handed. You can see over on the left side here, this is actually where my folders are. So there's not a ton of folders. Um, if I'm being honest, I'll admit that I spend more time than I really want to admit to thinking this stuff through, but being able to get it blocked out has been really helpful to me. Um, and so I feel like I'm finally at a point where the system is starting to get out of its, it get out of my way or get out of its own way so that I can get on with doing some thinking and applying it from there. So I found it to be really useful and helpful. I could just kind of walk you through the last minute here, just to give you a sense of the way I'm actually using this then. So the inbox, that's just where, that's where things land as I'm creating them. Uh, the idea lab is just, that's just all the ideas and things. There's nothing stamped on that. That's just where the, where general kind of atomic notes, I guess we're going to use that language land. MOCs is the same thing, putting there, um, within the workspace, I've got a number of different things like for day job projects around here, this workshop, I don't have a ton of these and I'm trying to keep this pretty light handed. So it's not super cluttered, but it's, I found that some of those areas of life just are functioning better for me with that dedicated space. 
the logbook is one that I mentioned with these stamps. And I will show you quickly here. And I think we'll probably just wrap up with this for the, the case of time. Um, a way that I am doing my daily notes and to be able to try process this. So I've got a little bit of a hybrid mashup between the, a home note and a daily note where I've got things where I can jump in. Um, I've been playing around a little bit with uh, August Bradley's PPV system and Notion. So I've got a link out to do some of that stuff. Got a place to go to OmniFocus Focus to be able to check in that task list. Fantastic how to be able to check my calendar and then toggle for being able to track my time. And so by being having those things parked together has made this a lot quicker for me. And then in any given thing that I'm doing during the day, I can take notes. And so if I click on this one, which is um, for today's showcase, you can kind of go through and you can look at some of these different pieces of it. Um, I, well, here is I've put together an example meeting note. This kind of stuff has been really useful. I, I like the PKM aspect of being able to use it as a productivity system because you can tie so much of it together. Um, it makes it quick and easy to be able to see the connections. But I think the bigger thing for me really does come down to this idea of doing this stuff in a way that I can get it out of my way and get on with the deeper thinking and finding more value in those spaces. So it's been really fun to play around with this. Like I said at the beginning of this, it's definitely a, uh, this is a starting point more than a finishing point. And it's um, it's been a lot of fun to do this and I really appreciate the, the course, Nick, and all the stuff that you have done there. And then with the team and the guides, uh, specifically calling out Anya for guiding crew 44 this time around, uh, really enjoyed my time doing this and thanks for listening to my demo. Now, I don't know about you, but I really enjoyed listening to how Justin has put thought into creating a better thinking environment for himself. How can you do that for yourself? Hopefully this showcase gave you some inspiration on how you can do the same. What is something positive you took away from watching this showcase? Let us know in the comments below. And until next time, stay connected.